Well, we are ready now for our main event, the WBO Super Flyweight Championship with Johnny Tappy and Henry Martinez. This crowd has come to see Tapia try and conclude what has been an interesting and courageous, some might say, comeback story. And Dave Bontempo has a look at Johnny Tapia, one of the rising stars of Albuquerque. Johnny Tapia is 5-0 and during his second career. He returned from a three-year layoff by halting Jaime Alvera in four. The longest fight in this string was a nine-round KO against Rafael Granillo. Tapia's hand speed wore Granillo down and took him out. One fight later, he won the NABF Super Flyweight title. The 27-year-old Albuquerque native has rebounded from a drug-induced idle period that results in constant random testing. Tapia has looked better with each effort during the comeback. This world title bout, his sixth fight in seven months, would be the perfect time to peak. Tapia has shown flashes of being a stylist, but he prefers to slug. With the crowd screaming, it will be interesting to see which way he goes. But either way, Johnny Tapia knows this one is going to be a dog fight. Henry coming right at me and me going right at him. It's like uh, two dogs hungry and you throw a meat and they go for it. So that's the kind of fight that I'm looking for. Graphic description by Johnny Tapia. Let's go to Dave for the AutoZone keys to victory. Okay, here's how these two dogs will stack up. Tapia <laughs> wants to stick and move with the jab and the left hook to the body, one of his better shots. Martinez wants to cut off the ring. He is smaller. He wants to rumble on the inside. And speaking of rumble, let's go to Michael Buffer in the center of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, present part two of the double rumble in the pit. This bout is sanctioned by the New Mexico State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Stan Gallup. Commissioners, Jim Boggio, Louis Burke, Leo R. Martinez, and Juan S. Nunez. Events coordinator, Max Abeta. Administrator, David Stewart. Physician in attendance at ringside, Dr. Stanford Bernardo. Timekeeper, Terry McDowell. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Vicky Depew. This contest is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. Supervisor at ringside, Nick Carasolius. Judges scoring the bout on a 10-point must system from New Jersey, James Condon. From Puerto Rico, Tomas Vasquez. And from Arizona, Al Munoz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from La Casa de los Lobos, the pit, here at the University of New Mexico. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO Super Flyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working for the 25th time in a world title bout, Denny Nelson. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white and blue, weighing in at 115 pounds. He comes to us tonight from San Francisco, California, with an excellent record of 16 and 1, with one draw, nine of his 16 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Henry El Pil Martin. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the black trunks with turquoise trim. Weighing 114 and one half pounds. Also an outstanding record. 26 and 0 with one draw. 16 by KO. He is the pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Presenting the baby-faced assassin, Johnny Tapia. Good heart, clean fight. Listen to what I have to say, and we'll get along fine. Good luck to both of you. And here's a look at the WBO rules. Three knockdown rule is in effect. No standing eight count. Ten point must scoring system. The judges score the fight. The referee does not. Only the referee can stop the fight, and a fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round. No standing eight count. Very significant because the ref has to make a judgment call. 
All right, we head into round one. The stare down was intense. Johnny Tapia with a big hug to his manager trainer, Paul Chavez, a man who stuck by him during the tough times. And hey, guess what? They're doing just what they said, going right at it. This might be a significant figure, the way they're fighting, the knockout ratio, very similar. But Dave, since Johnny Tapia came back from that almost four-year layoff, he's a different fighter. He's a banger now. Look at him land the right hand to Henry Martinez. He wants knockout every time he's out there now. He's been fighting with anger, which he says he directs against himself. On one of our top five boxing telecasts back in May, we saw the stylist in him, but that was a diversion. He likes to go inside. He is wailing away. Martinez landing some right hands. A big right by Martinez. Yeah, there is a lot of opening here for some early fireworks because they're both shooting from the side and the middle is wide open for both fighters. There's the left hook of Tapia, which is a big weapon for him. Now, Henry Martinez has gotten there with that right hand a couple times, but I think most people in boxing feel Tapia has a, a superb chin. A superb chin and a good reach from the outside. Martinez is counting on Tapia, staying right in front of him, and so far, Johnny Tapia is obliging. Boy, Tapia stopped as if to warn Martinez. And Mark, now look at Tapia. He is hot. Martinez just hit him, and Martinez can do that. The crowd thinks this is very good for Johnny Tapia, but it's not. He's being, allowing himself to get unraveled here. And he's getting nailed with right hands by Martinez. Johnny Tapia was hit with a low blow, a legitimate low blow. It was not called, but you can't stop punching. Tapia might do well to box a little, but from Martinez's standpoint, he said earlier, and he told us this morning, I've watched Johnny Tapia closely. I've seen what I can land, and apparently it was the overhand right. He also felt that Tapia would stay right in front of him. We have in our keys the fact that Tapia should stay outside, and that's one good reason. Well, it's been wild, wild here in round one. There's Tapia landing the left hook to the body. Every time he starts to throw that, though, there's a right hand for Martinez over the top. Well, for Tapia in the last week, he has not been able to sleep. He's been thinking about this fight. It's been consuming him. So you know the first round he's going to come out and be totally wild. Big left hook by Tapia. Doesn't move Martinez back. And Henry Martinez has served notice here in this first round. He's not awed by the crowd. He's not awed by Tony Tapia's punching power, which has been overpowering for a lot of fighters in the last five or six fights. It's wild. Don't go anywhere, because this one could be one of the best brawls we've had here on ESPN in a long time. Stay with us. There's the right hand bomb by Martinez. It was a wild stroke him, slug him fast there. Only 11 of 72 connects in that round with jabs. And especially Tapia ignored his jab. We are into round two. It's scheduled for 12. Could it go the way they're fighting? For the WBO Super Flyweight Championship. Johnny Tapia in the black trunks, the darling of Albuquerque, against Henry Martinez. Boy, look at that round one, man. Tremendous pace, a little bit of an edge for Martinez. Now, the crowd loved the way Tapia came out, but he is taking away one of his benefits, which is the jab. He's voluntarily relinquishing it. We'll see if he goes back to it. Boy, Martinez can't miss with that right hand. He may have stunned Johnny Tapia. Tapia talking to him now. But it's Martinez who is composed and getting the job done right now. Tapia has used his anger and his motivation to intimidate other opponents, but in this case, he's a better, in against a better fighter. I think he hurt Martinez with the left hook to the body and the head, and now they are fighting on every break. Mark Tapia giving the referee a lecture on low blows. The referee is having none of it. Now you cannot fight a referee at the same time, and a nice right hand by Martinez. Well, it's wild here in round two, halfway through the round. Tapia you boxing a little bit more. And what people realize when you watch a fight like this, it's one thing to say it's bombs away, but there's a lot of subtlety by both guys in setting up these shots. These are not just bombs. You're seeing hip movement, you're seeing head movement to set up the bombs. 
You're right, Dave. And you know, one thing that strikes me about Tapia, he's not throwing the double left hook. He's not landing to the body, so that left hook is flying over Martinez's head. He landed one good body shot downstairs with the left hook. He needs to go back to that. There's the jab of Tapia getting in. Martinez, though, excellent overhand right. Dennis Nelson, the referee, not performing according to Tapia's liking. Good right by Tapia. They are both landing huge shots. Like that one. Half, half a minute left in round two. But for Tapia, really, it's that left hook that might be his best weapon. These look like two chins with a long warranty. <laughs> they better have. There's the hook by Tapia and the right. Seconds remaining here in round two. It doesn't get too much better than this if you like boxing. We'll be back for round three. Here's the theme of the first two rounds. How's your chin? Fine. And how's your chin? Fine. They take turns with big shots. We head into round three. It is scheduled for 12. It's for the WBL Super Flyweight Championship. Henry Martinez in the white and blue trunks, and Johnny Tapia in the black with the blue stripe. It is a vacant title they're fighting for, and fighting is the operative word. Look at those numbers through round two. Very tight. They've each had a good round in this contest, and they have raised their intensity level up to the championship level. And Tapia is whacking away with that left hook. He now Tremendous right hand behind it, too. Strong jab by Tapia. Is Martinez hurt? The crowd thinks so. And Tapia tried to set up the left hook to the body again there. He moved to the right, but Martinez got away. And now for the first time, we see Martinez holding on to buy a few seconds. Well, Martinez has his rumble inside now, but Tapia ties him up. Tapia is still unhappy with Dennis Nelson, the referee, about not calling the low blows. Again, there's a low punch by Martinez. If Dennis, Mart if Dennis Nelson had a political ideology, it would be laissez-faire capitalism. He doesn't believe in any intervention, does he? He certainly doesn't. And he he's also been shielded a couple times on these punches. <laughs> Martinez has been subtle in getting them in. We are more than halfway through round three. Round three has been as exciting as one and two, and those were great. You see Tapia really trying to set up that left hook to the body now. He's got a feel for it. Johnny Tapia from here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, trying to complete what is a remarkable comeback story after four years of alcohol and drug abuse. He is tested randomly to keep him clean. He has passed every test. Right now, he's in a big test against Henry Martinez. He felt there was a lot of pressure fighting in front of the Albuquerque crowd, and he's come out with that type of aggression. Dave, doesn't it seem like Tapia, who has been a slow starter from time to time, has picked up the beat in the last round and a half? He certainly knows he can't afford a slow start in here. The crowd will not let him. And finally, Tapia is really going with that left hook to the body. Martinez tries to go downstairs, and Tapia using his speed a little bit. And a little bit of movement to the angle, so he gets a bigger target to shoot at. Tapia is holding in on that left hook to the body. Round three comes to a close. It was the best one so far for Tapia. Hey, they've all been excited. We'll be back. Take a look at Tapia right in front of Martinez. His left hook barely gets home. When he moves laterally, he's in a better position, and he's closer to land the big left hook. We move into round four. Johnny Tapia in the black trunks, Henry Martinez in the white and blue, and Tapia takes out a little of his frustration, hitting on the break, and oh my, big right by Tapia, hurts Martinez. Martinez should try to stop frustrating Tapia. He's only getting him more focused now. This crowd is on fire as Johnny Tapia tells him, yeah, I'm getting it done. 
Then he whips them into a frenzy in case they had forgotten where they were. Well, he better make sure he fights instead of cheerleads. But these are part of the idiosyncrasies that make up Tapia. It's all part of his persona. Big left hook by Tapia. As Dennis Nelson does his best job as usual to get in the way of the action. And he's doing a good job of that so far. The crowd chants Johnny Tapia's name. They'd like him to go into the kill. But all the while, Henry Martinez has counterpunched effectively in the last 45 seconds. He's trying to play off that left hand of Tapia but his punch volume is slowing down a little bit here, and the animation of Tapia is increasing. And the hook of Tapia now, I think, taking its toll to the body of Martinez. But there's Henry working well on the inside, and now establishing his jab a little bit. We are in round four. Martinez, a fighter who represented El Salvador in the Olympics, a 23-year-old who had a terrific amateur mark. You can tell, David, he is a very fine boxer. Good scoring, he fights well on the inside, he holds, he tries to frustrate Tapia. Anything to make Tapia make some key mistakes. Well, it's been an emotional and exciting round four with Johnny Tapia alternately being slugger and cheerleader to this crowd. And you wonder how the judges will look at these close rounds when the crowd is electrified. I don't think I wonder. <laughs> but you wonder how many Tapia can make that way, how many rounds he can steal that way. Jab and the hook by Tapia. He is landing now with that right hand, but, but Martinez walks through it. That one hurt Martinez. He was stunned by that right hand, and I don't think Tapia knew it. When Martinez doesn't punch his way in, Tapia is doing a better job at getting to him. Oh, the hook of Tapia. Oh, Dennis Nelson gives Tapia a warning for a low blow. He's missing a good fight. <laughs> Round four is a wild. into round five. Johnny Tapia in the black trunks. In the white and the blue, it's Henry Martinez. It's for the WBO Super Flyweight Championship. And there you see the story of just how exciting this fight has been. And Tapia is starting to pull away throughout the fourth round. Martinez's percentage went down to 25%. Tapia went up to 59%. Tremendous swing for Johnny Tapia. And that left up to the body of big reason. And that's why the numbers of punch profile are so important. It gives us the numbers to back up what we believe we're seeing in this fight. And not only that, they spot trends, changes from round to round. Good right by Martinez. Tapia dropped his left shoulder when he tried to get that left hook in there. A little sign of fatigue, and Martinez capitalized. And Tapia is starting to pull away a little bit. I've given him three rounds in a row after giving the first round to Martinez. Johnny Tapia, just before this fight, gave his trainer and manager, Paul Chavez, a card that basically thanked him for sticking with him all these years through some very tough times when almost any, everybody wanted to give up on him. Paul Chavez didn't. Johnny Tapia remembered him, and he said, I'm going to win a title for you. You know, a lot of the drug comeback stories are tired and overdone, but this one really is a case of somebody taking advantage of the second chance, taking responsibility for his own action years later. We are halfway through round five. It is scheduled for 12. And it is being fought at an unbelievable pace. You would think this was scheduled for six the way they've opened up and gotten near 100 punch territory at times. Both men, it seems, Dave, in this round, taking a little bit of a breather. Well, a lot can happen in a 12-round fight. Some mood swings and some rounds get taken off. Tapia's jab now becoming a factor again. Especially in this, what might be a sort of a round off. It's especially, especially important for him to try to win it with his jab. It's an easy round if he can do it. And Henry Martinez, let's give him credit in this fifth round. He's shown some good body shots and some good right hands. We should see Martinez getting his second win pretty soon. 
And in fact, here in this fifth round, I think he has shown evidence of that. Zappi's still going to the body and still using the jab. And more movement. Round five is just about in the books. Going back for round six, it should be good. We are back for round six of this WBO Super Flyweight Championship between Johnny Tapia in the black trunks and Henry Martinez in the white and blue. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Montempo. And Dave, if you're going to be a boxing announcer, you can't find a better place to be than here on this evening. The electric crowd atmosphere, the fighters trying different things, negating one another, showing the skills that got them here. And there is Tapia's jab starting to assert itself from an accuracy standpoint. He had a good round five. The hook gets there, but Henry Martinez pressing the action now. But Martinez is showing you some game skills here. If Tapia is not going to stand in front of him, Martinez is willing to work and get inside, take the chances, because he knows that's his only chance to win this fight on the inside. A couple of right hands get there by Tapia, as well as left hooks. Martinez working on the inside, and again, the hooks from Tapia. Good jab there by Martinez, and countered by Tapia. I'm a little surprised still to see Tapia willing to be so close to Martinez here. If he steps back a bit, he'll get the range for that left hook to the body and get his jab moving. And maybe a mental note to make here, the amount of body punches that Martinez is landing this could have an impact. They'll show up in the ninth or 10th round if they've been as, as effective as they look. And Tapia landing some great shots to the body and those counter right hands as well. I'll tell you, Henry Martinez has shown us an outstanding chin in this fight. He has taken some big shots from Tapia. Big shots and Tapia getting momentum going, putting shots together. Martinez comes right back. Tapia switches to lefty. Let's see how, how this ploy works. Usually a concession speech. Now he is smart to go back. But both men are really going to the body here in the sixth round with under a minute left to go. You saw Tapia throwing a fallaway left hook to the body. That punch is there to the head as well. A body shot followed by going upstairs. He has the quick hands. It has been an action fight all the way through. There have been several points where it looked like Martinez may have been stunned momentarily. Tapia has never been hurt, but Henry Martinez has been there throughout, landing some shots. Contrasting styles here. Tapia wants to get the jab moving. He gets it in. Martinez needs to smother him during this fight. We head into round seven. And it has been all that was advertised. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Von Temple here at the Pitt University of New Mexico, where this crowd first saw Danny Romero, a hometown hero, win the NABF Super Flyweight Championship. Now they're watching their Hero Johnny Tapia try and win the WBO world version of the Super Flyweight title. Look at those numbers. 68% landed by Tapia. And Martinez getting a lot of punches off. Didn't get credit for landing them. Good volume being maintained considering the fact that we are halfway through. Martinez has never been more than eight rounds. Tapia has been 12 on a couple of occasions in his previous boxing life and 10 since his comeback started in 1994. And that will not bode well for Martinez if this fight goes a long distance because if he's in virgin territory trying to make up points, it will be very difficult. And you have Tapia ahead by two points so far in this bout. 
and looking pretty consistent so far. Good looks on the outside, good success on the inside with his left hook to the body. You get the feeling Martinez is slowing just a bit here in the seventh round. We're halfway through the round. Well, he's approaching his limit here. Another round and a half, and he will match his career high as far as rounds. Nice move by Tapia as a lefty. And now he switches back. Well, now he'll try to do some frustrating of Martinez, show some different looks, show him the southpaw style if only for a second. He doesn't really need to do that, but he's feeling confident with everything he's throwing. And a moment ago, Martinez missed an overhand right, a punch he had been landing consistently. Shows that he's getting a little bit tired and a bit slower coming over the top. Under a minute left to go in round seven. It's scheduled for 12. It has been action packed. There's Tapia with a combination. You know, if you're just a little bit tired and you launch your punch from maybe two to three inches difference, that can make it miss. It's so small of a difference between hitting the punch and missing it when you get a little bit tired. And I think both men are a little fatigued right now. They have fought at an absurd pace. A few seconds remain here in round seven. This is a close one. And Martinez punctuates his part of it with a good right hand. We'll be back. Gut check for both fighters, just spilling it out there, leaving nothing to be desired as Martinez plows ahead, Tapia lands a left hook, and Martinez just continues to pull forward, trying to land the best shot. And they pick up the beat here in round eight. Johnny Tapia in the black trunks from Albuquerque. Came in here with a record of 26-0 and one with 16 KOs. And Henry Martinez from San Francisco at 16-1 and one with nine KOs. They have both been superb. And Martinez oh, with a slight edge there as far as landing, but look at the number thrown. Over 140 punches, a percentage very close. Hey, these fights for these guys come along only so often, and they have risen to it, they've prepared for it, and they have performed very well. It's been an emotional evening here. A crowd of well over 10,000 people, maybe up to 12 here in the pit. The largest crowd to attend a boxing match here in Albuquerque, I guess, ever. And they have been treated to some great boxing. You like to see Tapia going downstairs as he just did with a double left hook, being focused, turning into his punches just as well as he did in the first round. And Martinez trying to cut him off and do damage on the inside. Missing a little bit more now, though, David. The fatigue is a part of it. There's the good right, though, by Tapia. What you're going to see is both fighters now missing more, but trying to load up and land the one telling shot in each round, the ones that will impress the judges. At some point in these fights, technique gives way to sheer determination, and we're coming close to that point. I think we may be there. Good job by Tapia. They both wail away here in round eight. It is not as pretty as it was earlier. The technique is going, but the will and the heart is still there. It is all guts right now. No backward step by design. The only way you move back is to be driven back. Both men starting to establish their jab again. That would be the ideal fight for Tapia if he can maintain it. His movement has been a little better than Martinez throughout this fight. He's using more of the floor. A close round in the eighth. Martinez is where he wants to be on the inside, but it's Tapia who takes advantage of it. And a big left hook to the body by Tapia. You saw it there. There's the advantage of reach. He can land what amounts to be a fall away left hook and not get hit by a cannon. An excellent round eight, a close one, and it ends as it began with both men wailing away. Good left hook by Tapia. He'll be back. I hope you will. The excellent punch by Johnny Tapia, his calling card in this fight, the left hook, and then he falls away out of trouble.
That body work by Tapia, an important part of this fight, and we head into round nine. Neither fighter is allowed any rest period where if they get some momentum going for 15 or 20 seconds, the other fighter comes in and takes it right away. The total numbers indicate to you how well both fighters have done, but Tapia with a pretty big edge. 50 punches more landed, and they've thrown over 1,100 punches. Now Tapia establishing the jab here. Well, now, these should be his rounds as far as the way they drew it up. It's in his territory. We'll see if he goes to the jab and tries to win them easily. Martinez has never seen a ninth round. He went eight rounds in his last fight against Jose Alonso. And man, it's as if Johnny Tapia was reading the press releases and said, these are my rounds. It's one thing to go from eight to 10. A fighter may be able to will himself two more rounds, but four rounds, that's half the battle all over again that he has to wage, and that should show up. And Tapia pressing Henry Martinez as he has not in the last several rounds. Tapia switching lefty, and you know, Dave, every time he's turned to lefty, he's done well. He's picked the right time to catch Martinez coming in, and then he goes back. It's an interesting ploy by Tapia. And most fighters cannot get away with that. No. Most of them get caught, they turn their shoulders, they get caught, they're always in between. Halfway through round nine, referee Dennis Nelson breaks the two. He's managed to stay out of the, the action relatively in the last three or four rounds, something he didn't do earlier. Good double left hook by Tapia. Martinez coming back with his own jabs. There was so much opportunity there when Tapia dips down to throw his left hook for a split second. The right hand of Martinez is right there if he can simply time it. Well, the other champions in this uh, super flyweight or junior bantamweight division, Lee Hyung Chu has the WBA title, WBC title by Hiroshi Kawashima, and Harold Gray has the IBF title in this weight division. Which always leads me to ask, how many worlds are there? Ah, <laughs> oh, they're all world champions. Good left hook by Tapia underneath. A half a minute left to go in round nine, and Dave, this has been an excellent round for Tapia. Able to switch styles, do it effectively, go on the outside. He has shown more looks in this round than in any other round of the fight. He's really given a complete guide to what he's all about technically in this round. We'll be back. Stay with us. The jab puts him in the path of this right hand. Johnny Tapia in between rounds looked at Paul Chavez, his manager and trainer, and said, I'm the champion. And Paul Chavez says, I know you are. Well, they've got three more rounds to go for him to prove it, but they believe he can do it. Well, you talk about the fragile psychological state of a guy in a title fight. Tapia with a big round nine there, a two to one edge. He is in a zone, he knows it, he feels it, and it's making him a better fighter throughout this contest. And now let's talk about Henry Martinez. This is a place he's never been, Dave. What can he do, do you think, to try and get himself psyched to come back in this fight? Well, he can figure that anything can happen in a title fight. Nothing is etched in stone. Adrenaline can carry him but he must get on the inside and do his best work. And Johnny Tapia gets this crowd wild again. You've got him leading by three points. And this crowd makes Johnny Tapia a better fighter. Is the adrenaline flowing in Johnny Tapia? I guess so, my goodness. It's flowing like molten lava here. He may be a little out of control, but as Dave has said, that's when Johnny Tapia does the best. Oh, big uppercut by Tapia. Whatever mistakes he might make by being too psyched up are more than compensated for his intensity. Johnny Tapia treats a boxing match like it's a rock concert, and that's the way this crowd is treating it. And right now, they're cheering his hit songs. Big uppercut by Tapia. Excellent left hook, and Henry Martinez wading in but taking punishment in the process. Tapia is now showing the measured effort that we thought we might see earlier. 
stays on the outside, then goes inside. But he is not one-dimensional here. He is showing everything. He is not really able to be, you can't key on him. Good right hand by Tapia. No, he is anything but one-dimensional. Under a minute left to go here in round 10. A lot of steam coming out of Martinez's shots here, as you would expect now, as he goes into that uncharted oh, territory. He's hurt. punches in other rounds, but his accuracy goes up. And one reason is that there is so much more of Martinez to hit. His arms are down, he's exposed more, and shots that were caught before are getting in now. They are going to the WBA Super Flyweight Championship. Johnny Tapia in the black trunks is now widening his gap, we believe, against Henry Martinez, and he is going after him. Martinez is hurt. And from Martinez's perspective, Johnny Tapia is the wrong guy to get excited. something a long time and when they start to sense it they are simply uncontrollable and Johnny Tapia would not be denied we were wondering what was holding Martinez up in the 11th round and the fatigue factor finally overwhelms him Tapia sitting down measuring it's simply an accumulation of bombs the left hook the right hand coming in Martinez here has jelly legs and he is bound to go down from these shots Tapia fades back gets great great Leverage into his shots, and ultimately it's the cut that decides the contest, but Martinez had nothing left anyway. Watch Tapia turn into his shots. The hip movement gets the right hand in, turns in with the left hand. He's heading seven shots in a row, and Martinez has simply had enough. He landed 22 of 24 shots in that exchange, and that spells curtain time. Ladies and gentlemen, before we give the official time, how about a round of applause for this young man from San Francisco who came here with a lot of heart, Henry Martinez. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Referee Danny Nelson has to stop the bell. The official time, one minute, 23 seconds of round 11. The winner from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and New Super flyweight captain of the world, Johnny Tapia. It was a long way back for Johnny Tapia. 
But tonight, he's a world champion. Johnny, your emotions right now. I'm very excited. I got to give a lot of thanks to him. He's one of the tough fighters out there. My manager, my grandpa, my grandma, my wife, and Mally. You made Everybody it all the way. in Albuquerque, my brother. All we made it, baby. It's been a long road, man. You made it all the way back. How did you do it tonight? I fought out of heart. I got a big heart. I refused to go down, refused to lose. I trained too damn hard for this. I'd like to give a lot of thanks to my hometown for coming to support me. I gave a lot of thanks to Bob Barham and Bruce Chapter for really doing this for me. Well, I this, put the data with top right. This top was right. your night. You brought the crowd into it. They rewarded you, and you rewarded them. Johnny, congratulations. I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Let's take it back now to Al Bernstein. Al? Tremendous win for Johnny.